Do you remember the good old days of social media where you would post random pictures that men that made no sense to anything and you talked about things that you actually cared about and funny internet memes and everything just felt so free. You could be whoever you wanted to be online and it didn't matter because it was a free space to explore yourself and your interests and that was all. And now it's a place where people are constantly on private islands and private jets driving supercars and talking about how they got fit and healthy and how your life is rubbish because you're not also fit and healthy. And so today I wanted to talk about flex culture, about people who flex their booty squat routine when they've actually got a BBL, people with fast cars, expensive jewellery and bags and just all those people that we should look up to because they don't have a real job but get paid by just being them. Thank you the Kardashians for making this a thing. <laughs> so what is flex culture? Flex culture is where you go online to show off. You post things because you want to show off. Now I'm no saint. I have dived into flex culture before. If you saw my pictures from Tenerife, you all know that I woke up at stoop the clock every morning to get a beautiful sunrise shot in my bikini and that was flexing. That was me saying, look at my Monday morning compared to yours. And this was back in January too, England January, where it's freezing cold and horrible and gray and rainy. And I'm there going, look at me, I'm so hot. <laughs> so I'm no saint. I have done it before and it is not good. But in some ways, I almost feel like I felt like I had to. When you go away on holiday, you have to take all the pictures, not just to show your family and friends anymore, but to show the world, to say, look where I am, look at what I'm doing. Whenever I get new items, you buy new gym clothes, new bags, new jewelry, you have to show it off. I just did a huge jewelry order, um, which I haven't shown anyone, and I wear it all the time. I'm not wearing it today because I've been lazy, but. I absolutely love it. I did a pyjama order of loads of different pyjamas. I could have hauled them because that's all showing off. That's flexing. Look at the amount of money I got. I could just drop it in a hundred pairs of earrings. Do you know what I mean? It's absolutely crazy. People flex anything. People flex the most normal things. Like, look, I bought a car, but I have to show it off and I have to blur the number plate so you can't search it. All this stuff is absolutely crazy. And I think, what would people think? 30 years ago when social media wasn't even a thing and the internet was only just starting to become something, what would they think of the world that we live in now? And so, especially with the next generation that are growing up alongside social media, I was born in the mid 90s, so I got quite lucky in that, yes, the internet was there and was accessible for me, but I wasn't on it all the time. I grew up in a time where smartphones weren't a thing until I was basically at uni. <laughs> I didn't have a phone with good internet on it until I was 16, yet today there's literal babies that have phones because that's what keeps them quiet, that's what keeps them happy. And all of a sudden, flex culture becomes so much worse because all of a sudden these hard-working parents that don't have all the money in the world are being told by their children that they need the newest trainers, they need the Louboutins, they need the Louis Vuitton bag, they need the newest iPhone because all their friends do despite them all being seven. <laughs> it's absolutely crazy and I know back in my days I would go to my parents and say no I need a Jane Norman bag because everyone has Jane Norman bags. No I need to have a Blackberry because everyone's got a Blackberry and so yes that sort of culture has always been a thing, but now it's so much more exasperated because it's online. It's not just playground gossip. It's the internet. It's everywhere. And if you don't have the newest Air Jordans or the newest iPhone or the newest whatever, you're no good. And so is it the influencer's fault that they are flexing on us that we think our lives should be better, that because they got famous because they're pretty, that they shouldn't be allowed to show off these nice things. It's a tough one, it really is, because I know if I was at that level, I would want to show off the lavish holidays I'm going on, I would want to show off the delicious food I'm eating that most people can't afford, I would want to show off like the abs I've built in the gym and eating well and all that sort of stuff, you know, you want to show off how well you've done, but 
at the end of the day, it all comes down to why are you showing off that stuff? Are you showing off because you're proud and you want to show that? Or are you showing off because you feel you have to? Because you have to prove something to people. And I do wonder, with these influencers that are literally influencers, they aren't proper models, really. They're Instagram models and all that sort of stuff. Do they feel they need to flex more on people because the way they made their income is so unorthodox and people don't see it as a real job. So they say, oh, well, my real job bought me this 300,000 pound Lamborghini. <laughs> you know, like, is there a correlation between people who have low self-esteem because they're constantly being belittled by others, needing to show off their wealth and their earnings to prove that they're rich? There's one woman I like hate watch on Instagram and she's constantly going on about all her Louboutins and how she can work for, she's in a multi-level marketing scheme, <laughs> if you want to know, um, her Louboutins and how she can work from anywhere and like, oh look, she's at the sauna and the sauna's empty because her and her husband don't have to work conventional hours and all this. And it's like, who are you doing that for? Because if you look at like old money, if you look at the billionaires of the world, the Mark Zuckerbergs, the Elon Musks, if you will, they don't flash the cash. They have these multi-million mansions, but they're not always posting about it. They don't wear designer outfits because, to be honest, designer outfits are kind of a scam to make poor people feel they're rich, but really just to spend all their money on. I knew a guy who had only designer clothes, but was living literally pay to check to paycheck and was in his overdraft because he couldn't afford it. But he felt he had to wear it because that's what everyone expected of him, even though they didn't. Like, no one cares that you're wearing Calvin Klein jeans. No one cares. Like, legit, it's ridiculous. What makes rich people rich is that they don't spend money. They don't spend stupid money. They're smart with their money because that's how they keep it. Whereas people who buy the designer clothes, who buy the stuff that they wear once and then sell because they're never going to wear it again, but at like 5% of its value because it's second hand, the people that feel they have to flex on others are the people that aren't actually doing that well because they have to prove it to everyone. They have to show people, look how great I'm doing. I know when I posted those bikini pics, if I'm being completely candid here, I wasn't at the weight I wanted to be. I wasn't completely confident with myself, but I wanted to, to show that off. I wanted to enjoy it regardless because I wanted to feel good. And the pics, oh my God, they look incredible. They are straight fire, if I'm not lying to you. They look incredible. But I know I wasn't 100% confident with them. And I know if I went off somewhere else now, somewhere hot, I'd probably still wear a bikini, but I still wouldn't be fully confident, you know? Full confidence comes from when you don't need to show off. You don't need to show off your new relationship because you're happy with them. You're only showing off your new relationship to try and make your old relationship jealous, which isn't going to happen, never happens. You're only showing off these bags and these cars and these clothes because you're trying to show off and show to people in your life or just strangers on the internet who send you hate that you're worthy of something because you have these expensive things. But really, what really matters at the end of the day is who you actually are. And so I worry for generations below me because I've kind of figured out the system, if you will. I, it doesn't really affect me now. Like, yes, I'd like to look hotter, but I know that's down to me, you know? I'm not gonna get surgery to pull like fat from my belly into my butt. That's a bit weird. but. With the younger generation, they probably won't see it like that. I don't know. I'm not part of that generation. And I'm, I'm not friends with anyone who is, because that'd be weird. But I do worry for them because they'll see these people that have basically no job, being themselves as their job because they got that famous. And they'll think that they can do that too. And then they can buy the Lamborghinis and they can buy the expensive shoes and they can buy this and they can buy that when really that's not going to make them happy and it's not actually going to help the world. Like I always say, the jobs that were essential during lockdown are the jobs that deserve the high money because they need the people in there. They need people stocking shelves in the shops. They need people on the front line in A&E and nurses and doctors. They need people who are emergency services, firemen, policemen, all that sort of stuff. Because us office workers, us influencers, if we didn't do their job, our job, the world wouldn't end. But if those people didn't do their jobs, it literally would. It wouldn't be able to go on. It'd become a dystopian society where craziness would ravage, you know? And so I worry that as these influencers flex on these, on their younger audience, because let's be honest, audiences can be like completely crazy age ranges, they're going to want to do that. They're going to want to pursue that. And then the roles that are actually needed, the doctors, the nurses, the 
shop workers aren't actually going to be filled the places aren't going to be filled because people don't want it anymore because why should i do a really hard job working myself to back breaking standards for minimum wage when i could just become a fitness influencer on instagram and make millions you know what is that really teaching our kids what is that really saying to people are we really saying oh no those jobs don't matter because you could become Kim Kardashian. No, that's not how this works, you know? So I do really worry about flex culture and I do think it's ruined social media because before, there was a time before it was all monotonized where you could post whatever you wanted. You could talk about whatever you wanted. No, no one was getting canceled every two minutes. The news wasn't constantly rife in it. So it wasn't constantly peddling this bad news towards you. People weren't always flexing on you. like. Go through old pictures. I'm sure if you went through some of the Kardashian, like Kylie Jenner, for example, if you went through some of her old pictures on Instagram, it'd be quite shocking because it'd be a completely different world. And now it's all lip kits and filters and Lamborghinis and big houses and cute kids, to be honest, let's be honest. But it's not right. And I really, really don't like it. And I don't see any way out of it apart from educating our kids to say, look, this isn't the real world, this is online, even these people aren't happy. They may be saying they're happy or showing happiness, but this is just a snippet of their life. You don't see the rest of it. You don't see their staggered income because they're not always making money. You don't see them crying because they look fat in a picture or because the, like, the picture they uploaded didn't get the likes they wanted. You don't see the other side, you only see the highlight reel. And I think the sooner people realise that and the sooner we're able to tell people, look, this isn't right, this isn't normal life, the sooner they'll realise and life can go more back to normal in terms of kids wanting proper jobs again. I wanted to be a vet when I was a kid, then I couldn't hurt animals, like euthanise them and stuff, so I wanted to be an author, then I wanted to be a film critic and then I go into marketing. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. But yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts on this topic as well because I find it so fascinating, like this world that we're living in today where everything is so accessible, always, everything's always on and that's not good, that's not good at all, I absolutely hate it. If I could go back to being like, I've always said if I could go back to like the 80s, <laughs> I'd be maybe not happier but a lot more con content in my life that all this isn't on all the time and we're not constantly being peddled bad news after bad news to keep us scared and to keep us down but that's just me <laughs> but yeah i'd love to know what you think as well please leave me a comment and a like if you enjoyed this video and i will see you next time bye